Welcome to my desk. Uh, so because today is the 1st of October, we are going to do our Witchtober. Uh, and I'm doing it a little bit differently. If you've seen my Instagram, you've probably already seen this. But, flippity flip, I am actually going to combine these two prompt lists. So the one over here on the left that you guys can probably barely see because it's pastel is... I'm probably going to butcher these names and I'm really sorry. Safirlu, who is someone that I follow on YouTube. I'm a part of her Discord and I really like that community and that space and everything. And I really liked her witch-based um, prompt list, which was really cute. Um, but I also found this one by It's Lopez that I follow on Instagram. And sorry guys, I just woke up and I haven't even finished my coffee. I'm struggling with words today, as usual. Anyway, so I found this one on Instagram and I couldn't really pick between them. So I decided to find a way to squish them together. So uh, there's two things that I wanted to note here. That's for two things that I wanted to note here. Um, I did have my lovely boyfriend help me kind of come up with a way to roll dice off of these. And the idea is that I will roll two sets of dice because I'm fancy and have that many dice. Um, but essentially I will be rolling one number for this chart and then one number for this one. And then using those two words together to make one character or one image or one whatever. Um, the other piece of how I'm going to do this a little different is instead of doing one finished piece, I'm gonna go through and try to use up what's left of this Moleskine notebook that I have. And my idea is that I'm going to try to use at least one spread to do a bunch of sketches and kind of either plan out what this character looks like or do different versions of this character or try to squish those words together in a way that I really like. And then um, at the end of the week, I will go through and see what I made that week and try to pick at least one piece or one concept that I really like and turn it into a finished illustration. I'm probably gonna watercolor paint. What? I'm probably gonna paint the illustration with watercolors because that's what I've been all about lately and I have some new ones that I wanted to test out. A bunch of these uh, little tiny boys from that I got off of AliExpress, which I've swatched but I haven't really painted with them yet, so I'll probably end up doing that for this. Um, but anyway, so initially both of these lists are 31 prompts because it's October and there's 31 days, but the last prompt on the Sephira Lu is a witch Sona, which is just the idea of like creating myself as a witch character which is extremely on brand and I really love the idea, but I wanted to save that till the very end of the month. So I'm taking out of, taking it out of the rolling pool, pool, pool. And I'm just going to do that on October 31st, which is Halloween. Or if I don't get these done in a timely manner at the end of the month, because my thought process was, by the time we get through all of this, I will have enough ideas, I will have practiced and gotten to see what does and doesn't work and what really feels more like me so that I will have plenty of inspiration when I get to this last one. Um, <laughs> and the other reason was, and I didn't look super closely, but I did have to rewrite them. And I think between the two, there's some similarities, but there's only one where they use the exact same word twice. And it's 22 or 31 was the word moon. And as hilarious as it would be, I did not really want to try to illustrate moon moon as a witch. Um, the irony of this did make me laugh pretty hard. And maybe at the end of the month, if I get all of this done and I feel good about it, maybe I'll do a bonus Moon Moon video. Who knows? Uh, I thought that was funny, but because I wanted to pull this out of the pool of things to roll from, I decided to just cross Moon off of the second list so that it would be 30 to 30 equal -ness. 
So the initial idea was that you would use a d4 and a d10 to roll off of one of these. So your d4 would be like your tens column and your d10 would be your ones column. And how the d4 would work, since you're only doing zero through three, the four would represent zeros. So the four would be one through nine and four is just a placeholder. So it's effectively zero. And then one would be your teens, two would be your twenties, and then three would get you to 30. And then after that, it's just a reroll. So my thought was that regardless of what your ones column is, once you roll that three, you're doing 30. And then you go in, you cross this off. You can't do it twice. So then after that, it would just be reroll. Um, and the reason I did do the little circles for all of them, partially because I just write like that, but also so I can go in with something like bigger or whatever, and just like for this one, just come in and fill in the dots so I can keep track of which ones I've already done so that if I roll it, I can look real quick and be like, is that empty? No, okay, reroll. And then I was sitting and talking to the lovely boyfriend who helped me figure out the math for that and realized that that works really great if you're doing all 31 days, like normal people would, but considering I'm not, there's a better system for doing one through 30. And that would be using a D6 and a D10. And I'll show you guys here in a second. Uh, but essentially, so the D6 six would be split into, they would, your numbers would be split. So one and two would be one through nine, or excuse me, one through 10. And then three and four would be 11 through 20. And then five and six would be 20 through 30. Okay, so, so shiny math rocks. Uh, first of all, this is the cutest dice bag. <laughs> it's so great. It's just an adorable little fishy foo. I love his little eyeballs. I did have to go get a little metal toggle to keep it closed, but that was mostly a choice. You probably could tie it and be fine. I did get this at a, um, what do you call it? Like a, like a fall market, like a craft market. I was actually selling crocheted stuff and I saw someone else's booth and I went over and I fell in love with this dice bag. Um, I do have their business card. I did Google this real quick and I think they have changed their name on Etsy. So if you look up KB Stitchcraft, it will still pull them up, but it looks like their name is Lil Leviathan, which I think is adorable and cute because they had um, squid hats and scarves and an oarfish scarf and stuff, and it was just real cute. But um, it does kind of look like they are on hiatus right now, and that's pretty common given the current situation of things. But you can put get put on like a mailing list so that when they come back, you'll be notified because this is great. I also really love <sighs> my favorite feature of this adorable bag. See, he just vomits dice everywhere. And I am a dork and that is the funniest thing to me. So here's my shiny math rocks. Um, so I'm gonna kind of give a demonstration on how to do Sorry, I can't look for math rocks and also talk at the same time, I guess. Is that everybody? Okay, because I have tens, this, that, yeah, okay. So, these are my beautiful rocks. They're gonna go away. Okay, so, uh, but my thought was I was gonna pick two that are very obviously different. I could have done the two-tone dice instead, but I wanted to do these because they're pretty and they match. But then the little dice will represent, I think I was going to do the little dice for the left and the big dice for, no, reverse. So the big dice are going to be the first side and then the little dice are going to be this side. That way when I roll, I have something to consistently go by in order to know which one is what column. Um, so where did my notepad go? I just cleaned my desk so things have been moved and I'm very confused by it. So just as an example, uh, let's see if this will work. Anyway, so 
I will try to show you the D6 version first. So effectively, and I'll do it with the big dice so you can actually see it, uh, I would roll this. So I got a four and a seven. Okay, so then 47 would actually be 17. So then it would be 17 on this first side, which would be, I think that says cave. When you can't read your own handwriting because your R's and your V's look the same. And then you would roll again for the other side. So I got the number three and a two, and that one would be the 11 through 20 range. So it would actually be 12. And then I would go find 12, which is herbs. And then the idea is I would have to go find, come up with a sketch spread for a witch that has to do with caves and herbs and figure that out. Um, I'm probably not going to use that just because these are examples so I can show you guys and then I'll just start fresh. Although that is a cute idea. Um, so then how we would do for the other way is use this guy. And it'll be hard for you to see because of that, but I'll show you, I guess. Um, so for table one, we got a four and a two. So, uh, four is your zero. So this is just the number two, which on here is paper. And then we would roll again. Oh, that's kind of weird, but I want a two. So it'd be 27. Yeah, that's how numbers work. And on here, 27 is the word tree, which is a little on the nose. But then I would have to come up with a spread that's a witch that has to do with paper and tree. Whatever that means. And because I'm pretty loosey-goosey about things, I'm going to interpret this however I heck can feel like it. Uh, because I like kind of instantly get a mental image and kind of work with this. So cave and herbs makes me think of like a drow or someone in a cave like harvesting mushrooms is kind of what I think. Um, or some kind of scraping some kind of weird moss off a wall because it's a valuable thing that grows in blah blah blah. And then paper and tree kind of makes me think of the sacred trees in Japan with the big um, rope around them because you usually will tie like paper charms and stuff to trees so my brain thinks that. And that would actually be kind of a cute idea to do because then I could draw a Japanese witch. But these were examples so I probably Alright, so this is the flip through portion of the video. Um, as you can tell by some of my colored dots, I have made it through the first week of October. So because October started on a Thursday, and Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so there's only going to be like four sketch pages for the first week. So on here I am going through and trying to remember to color in the ones. The colors don't mean anything, they're just the marker I had on hand that day. Um, but then that way I can keep track of where I'm going and where I've been. So I'm gonna flip you guys through some of the pages. There are some uh, clips down here on the bottom and those are just there because uh, I have a couple of warm up pages. Like I skipped the page here because I didn't want it to bleed through into the sketch page. And then over here, those aren't actually for Witchtober. Those are just warm up sketches so that my hand's a little ready to do this before I actually jump in and draw something that I might have to choose from. All right, so day one, I rolled astronaut and tree. And this was probably so far the hardest one that I could find some kind of correlation together. So I do know that this first thing I drew over here, I really love this pose. I kind of like the idea that she's like wearing a fishbowl helmet, she's in space and she's trying to use magic to grow trees in space instead of oxygen because it's not there. Um, I don't know what that is. I was playing with her outfit and trying to make her more futuristic, decided a skirt made more sense for a witch 
because sometimes I get so focused on the prompts that I forget the whole basis is it has to be a witch. Um, I did really like this one and then I went in and used, where is it? Uh, this dude for just going over my really light blue sketches because I found that the black ink was a little too hard to pick through on this paper. But this kind of had a nice, I also really like how it looks with the blue color wise. And then day two, Ooh, I got Magic Circle and Fortune. So I think Fortune was meant more to be like money maybe, but I was thinking like, I'm telling your fortune. Like I'm using tarot cards to see your future and all this and tell you all of that. So like a fortune teller kind of thing. And now the word fortune smells, smells? <laughs> Jesus. Feels really weird coming out of my mouth. Yes, that word smells weird now. Good job, cat. Anyway, um, so I instantly had an idea and I really like it. It's hard to tell from the sketch, but it's just someone sitting cross-legged. There's a big magic circle underneath her and then tarot cards are just kind of floating around her and there's two more magic circles like in her hands. I'm lazy about drawing magic circles, but I'll probably have to just figure that out. But then I kind of wanted to just work on, I didn't like that one, but I like this one. What makes it look like she's actually looking up or down at you or angling her head back or whatever, is I tried to draw the eyes here and that was like, uh-uh, that ain't right. And then I moved them up and then because it's pen, they're still there and it added a weird feature to the drawing that I might have to find a way to put in, like some kind of line or something. Because when I redrew her over here, it doesn't look quite the same but I kind of wanted to flesh out more of an outfit idea for her so that if I go back and do this one, I can figure out how this would work in here. Um, and then the next day was so accurate. This is such a mood. Okay. Um, so on the third day, I got the prompt sleepy and beverage which I had had a really long day of trying to catch up on homework and was kind of struggling to have any energy for anything. I was really sleepy and exhausted and I just wanted to take a nap, but I went to a coffee shop and I sat down and I was drawing this. So I was sleepy and I had coffee. So I drew this kind of sketch idea and then I decided this was actually much cuter. Is a little witch girl using magic to stir her coffee and she's so sleepy she doesn't notice it's like dripping out of the cup and then I went back in to kind of solidify what her outfit was because I had a vague idea and then I kind of made a better idea and went in and added some of these details but I really like this one I think she's pretty cute as a character so we'll see what happens and then the last one that I got yesterday. I was really busy so I didn't really have time to come in and do a whole lot with this one, but it was bird and herbs. Um, and my brain kind of thought of like the shawls that look like wings, so I liked the idea of maybe she wears this big shawl and it looks like it's got feathers because it's magic. Um, well, I did draw this derpy looking bird first. I don't know how to draw birds. And then I kind of tried to solidify her hairstyle and how she really dresses. I went with a more Victorian style-esque-ish. But I liked the idea of like her picking berries or pulling some kind of herb plant thing out of a thing and there's a bird on her shoulder. But I, I kind of like this idea. I thought this was very thematically accurate for what I got. Um, so of these four, I think the one, I don't know, because I was thinking Magic Circle and Fortune was going to be the one I really wanted to paint, but I really like this Sleepy Coffee one, like a lot. Now that I look at it, she's freaking adorable. And it would be fun to do something where maybe she's just like kind of half asleep and do like fall colors for this one. Um, I feel like this one is more thematically witchy and spoopy. I am going to be doing the full illustration in a different video, so I guess I have a little bit of time to make up my mind. 
if you guys, I guess if you guys want to vote or give me an opinion on which one I should do between day two of Magic Circle and Fortune, or day three, which is Sleepy and Beverage, would you rather see the Sleepy Coffee Witch? Or I guess that could be tea. Chamomile makes more sense, but I'm more of a coffee drinker. Or would you rather see kind of spooky fortune telling girl? Um, let me know in the comments which one you guys would rather see as an illustration. I mean, ultimately, I can end up doing however many of these I want because they're mine and I can do what I want. But for specifically uh, Witchtober and what I'm doing, I only want to do one a week. So I'm not putting too much pressure on myself to really have to pump out things. That's part of why I decided to do sketches instead of full illustrations for the every prompt anyway. Uh, my schedule looks like it has all this free time, but there's a lot on my plate and I really just don't have time to dedicate to doing a full illustration for each one. And the only way I'm going to get through doing the whole list is if I'm loose about the sketches, save the illustrations for the end of the month, so I'll just save up a list. I would love to know which one you guys would like to see because then it's less decision making for me. But uh, yeah, so that is where we are at for the first week, if I can get to this page. Um, I'm glad it got better because this first one, Astronaut is, I really like what Sephira Lou, Sephira Lou, I don't know, I can't words. Um, I really like what she did with Astronaut. It was her prompt, so she probably had an idea for it. But I really struggled to merge tree and nature with outer space and futuristic. They are stark contrast to me. So this one was really rough, but I did it because I needed to do it. So I'm really glad that the dice were kind to me on future days and the next day gave me like Pivotal Witch and then like something kind of close to home and something kind of fantasy, so. Hey guys, Outro Cat here. It's Wednesday. I meant to have this up on Monday, but thanks for watching it anyways. Uh, I am still working on the prompts. I am still doing all my sketches. I'm just having to put my video editing stuff on a back burner because school stuff. Um, and so who knows when the video series will be done. I'm hoping by the end of October, but I am going to finish the whole thing. I'm very certain I'm going to finish the whole thing and do it just maybe not in one month. If you guys are also working on some kind of monthly prompt thing for October, if you're doing some kind of big project in October, if you're doing some kind of art challenge or whatever, let me know what list you're using. Explain your project to me. Shoot me a link so I can go check it out. Uh, just let me know in the comments. And then in the description are all of my social media links in case you wanted to follow me. Along with the new Discord link. I have set up a new Discord and right now I'm kind of testing it out with some friends. But if you would like to join us, I believe it is called Creative Club. Because I wanted to be like an art club, but not specifically just like traditional art. I just want it to be an open space for creatives to make friends, kind of get inspiration from each other, get tips and tricks, help each other out, all that kind of jazz. So that anyone who is creatively inclined can just kind of hang out. And if you do join and have any ideas or suggestions of things that should be added or some ideas of what we can do with the space, let me know. I'm open to suggestions. I just wanted to make the space and I'm totally all about making it the space that you want. So, so yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, hopefully I will get next week's video up in a more timely manner. I'm hoping either Sunday or Monday. Yeah. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.